Hello my friends and welcome to my craft room. It's Lori again with Stampinology for, with another awesome card. I saw this card and I had to make it for you guys. I wanted to do something that really showed off this um, set. This is the Sketched Butterflies. It, uh, it also has a die set. Yes, Sketch Butterflies die set, which will cut all of these out. Also, I think the sayings are really pretty on here, too. So um, I like to think that, you know, you brighten up so many of my days. I just think that's lovely. So anyway, let's get going while I show you how to make this awesome card. This is not my design. I have cased this design from the lovely Jackie Bullhouse. Uh, at Clope and Stampers. You guys know I love her. She is like, in my opinion, the absolute queen of the fun fold. And when I saw this, I had to do it. I had tried this before. Um, I don't know, I guess it was about a year ago. And, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting hoarse. And my allergies have hit back again. We have, uh, it's not that hot. It's only about, I think I, I, think I looked it up. It's like, 21 degrees 20 21 degrees um in fahrenheit that's roughly 67 66 67 um so it's not that hot but we have 100 percent humidity so literally you can walk outside and actually feel wet this is one of the lovely things about england um it doesn't you know there's so many different kinds of rain here it's kind of like the eskimos with their different kinds of snow in England, we have different kinds of rain, and today it's raining without raining, which is really quite a feat. Anyway, regardless, um, when I saw this, I had tried this several times, and I never could make it work. And I thought, well, maybe I just don't know how to follow directions. But when I was looking for uh, the last one I did, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, that was, a, I called it the, the Z Fold Plus, that had like the cutout piece in it. And when I was looking for that, I ran across this. And she actually says in the video, the same, she had the same experience I did. She saw this many places, tried it, never could make it work. So Madam Brilliance sat down and figured this out. This is one piece of paper, which is, I'm gonna show you how to do it because, and also uh, I'm going to link her video if you are, are watching on um, YouTube, replay on YouTube, then it will be down in the notes and I will put it in the comments if you're watching me on Facebook. So anyway, let's get started. This is really, it's am amazing how fast this is going to go. And I've got a couple of tips for you as we go along. So anyway, here we go. This does fold flat before we get done. Now I tuck my butterflies in. So when they fold flat and you mail it, they'll pop back up for you. All right, so anyway, let's set that aside. I'm making this one in a slightly different colorway because um, you guys actually approved of that when I started doing that, so yay. Lots of different cards to send. We are gonna start with a half a piece of cardstock cut lengthwise. And since there's so much scoring on here, I'm going to go through this in metric and hang loose, all you Imperial folks, I will go through it again in Imperial. And I'll go slow because there's a lot to write down. But anytime, you can go to my blog at stampanology.co.uk and it's, it's for free. You just go to the blog post and all of the measurements are in there. So anyway, first I'm going to start off showing you a tip. If you have one of these awesome Stampin' Up! cutters, which I can't live without because it has the score blade on it along with a cutting blade which is one of the things I love I you know less equipment on my desk the better off um, but I am I'm gonna tell you on the score buddy you can follow the same tip because I know score buddies are not that long so if you start since there are so many little bits we're gonna start measuring on this side let me make sure I'm in the camera so you can see that here you go we're gonna start our scoring on this side oh this piece of paper um, like I said, it's it's a half a sheet of cardstock. So if you work in a metric with me, it's 29.7, the full length, and 14.85 down the side. And if you work in an imperial, it's the 11 inches across by four and a quarter. Okay, that measurement done. Now, we're gonna score 
score, score. To start, and like I said, I'm going to start in metric, and then I'll go back over it with you from Imperial, so hang tight. So it's going to be 1.5, so that's a tiny little amount to score. And if you're trying to do it this way, um, you know it's, it's hard to, to keep it straight. So go ahead, start in this direction, put it down, do your, your one and a half, and then you're going to move it out to the three, like that, and you're going to go zip, zip, and do the three. Then you're going to flip it over. Okay, so we started at one and a half, 1.5 centimeters, three centimeters. Now we're going to go to 11.8, and then we're just going to keep rolling it outwards. So we've got 11.8 and the next one, oops, so you do 11.8, score, move it out to 13.3 and yes that's just a tiny amount to move out because we're we're working in, in little bitty uh, two centimeter uh, areas here. So, or two, well, it's not quite two and a half, it's probably two. Um, so where, where do we get to? We're at 13.3, then you move it out to 14.8, then 16.3, 17.8, scoot over some more, 26.7, and 28.5 is your last one. And now that's the simple way to do it. And if you are going to be working on a score buddy and you find it difficult to flip it, um, you may have recognized one of those um, folds in there was the exact halfway fold. So what you can do is take the numbers, go from the halfway fold, turn it, and then go to the halfway fold again. I hope that makes sense. But it was just, it's easier though when you have this kind of score thing to just go do 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 all the way across. All right, and now for my wonderful followers that are working in Imperial, Get ready to write. Our first score is at half an inch. Then we're gonna go to one inch. Then we're going to go to four and a half, five inches, five and a half, six inches. You guys see what's going on here, right? Six and a half, and then 10 inches, and then 10 and a half. Right, everybody got that? I will repeat it. For metric, it's 1.5, 3 centimeters, 11.8 centimeters, 13.3 centimeters, 14.8 centimeters, 16.3 centimeters, 17.8 centimeters, 26.7 centimeters, 28.5. In Imperial, it's a half an inch, one inch, four and a half inches, five inches, five and a half inches, six inches, six and a half inches, ten inches, and ten and a half. All right. That's it. That The hard part is done. So now we're just going to go zipping through because we're getting into the fun, fun part. Now we're going to fold it. I found it easier to work by folding it in half first. You don't if you mess up on a fold, it doesn't matter because you want these folds to be mega flexible. So I'm going to bring the original out here so you can see. So our first fold is you go up like that, and then you do the same on the other side. Okay, so now we have just made our first fold. Now this fold goes up as well like this. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So what we've got here is sort of a... Oh, did I do it wrong? Yeah, I did it wrong. Cool. See? Doesn't matter, though. What you're looking at is sort of a... Yeah, that's a W. Or an M. It could be an M. But anyway, that's the first set. Once you get that in there, give it a good drubbing. So get out your bone folder and show it who's boss. All right. There we go. And now this one, we're going to do the same thing. 
You go down and then up like that. And then we're going to go down on the back and then up. So I didn't quite get my measurement on that one, so it's going to be a little bit off. But I think you'll see it's not going to make that much of a difference. Sometimes when you're scoring a lot, it's um, because there actually is depth to the score lines. They don't always come out perfect. But what you want is this shape. All right, and because it's going to fold flat like that to go in the envelope. So once you have that shape, you're all good. So if you folded it wrong in the process, no worries. Just go back and fold it right. All right, got that part. Now we're done with this for the moment. Let's set our pretty one back out of the way. Now we're going to cut some pieces for the outside. Okay, wait, first. The next thing I actually did was I wanted to use vellum butterflies because I just think, I don't know, ever since I bought the butterfly thing, I've wanted to do vellum butterflies. So I wanted blue butterflies and I don't have any blue stays on ink. So I used um, Knight of Navy dye ink. When you use dye ink on vellum, it takes a long time to dry. I don't mean two hours. I don't mean three hours. I mean like 10, preferably overnight. So if you do want to do this, I highly recommend stamping these guys or, or use stays on. Stays on will dry in about 20 minutes um, because it's just, it's a different ink. It's an alcohol based ink. So, um, but the dye inks take a long time, but when they do dry, I mean, it's, they're, they're dry, they're done. Um, the interesting thing is, if this were thick on here, you could actually jib it off. But, you know, we're not stamping big, thick things. This is delicate. But, um, anyway, I wanted to show these to you. If you do want to use vellum, if you don't want to use vellum, these look very pretty in white stamped in blue. I did a test where I did a, um, I did the daffodil yellow, and I stamped that in the blue, and that looked really pretty. I did the orangey one. It was pretty, but not realistic. But I just really wanted to do vellum butterfly, so well. Well, but if you want to see, this is the back piece that I stamped. But you see how pretty it looks on white. So you absolutely could do this on white. Just letting you know. Um, but anyway, like I said, go ahead, stamp these guys, let them dry, 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 preferably overnight, but at least ten hours then cut them out with the dies. And then as when I had the die machine out, I would cut the other set of butterflies, which um, come with the dies. These are just the straight dies. These are the dies that cut out the actual stamps. So anyway, enough said about that. I love this paper. This is the amazing Thoughtful Wishes. You guys have seen me use this a lot. I will probably continue to use it because, um, because I love it. It's just really really awesome stuff so what I did is I decided which piece I wanted and I sort of I used actually this is the backing card so I cut the backing card first and then I kind of set it on here and drew little light lines around it to figure out you know which piece I actually wanted so these are anyway I just want to show you how I had cut it out so this is all extra bits I put this to the side this is actually the inside piece. I'm going to give you the numbers for this. The inside piece and the outside piece, you would think they are exactly the same, but they're not. Of course not. Let's make this easy. Not. All right, so anyway, uh, butterflies. I'll get my notes back up here. For the inside panel, this is 8.6 centimeters by 10.2 centimeters. So, and it's, um, it goes in like that. The, um, I know I have, I know I have, um, imperial measurements. Here they are. A three and three quarters by four. This is the same size that goes on the back. 
So you cut one in white or whatever. Since you can't write on this, it's just, you know, it's designed to sit up and be pretty like that. Um, I made a panel for the back side so that I can write my notes on it. Um, this is completely optional. If you don't need to write a note, you can just use more of the um, designer series paper on it. But otherwise, do, you can do it like that. So, here's my two inside pieces. I stamped these with the lovely Knight of Navy. This Wishing You a Beautiful Birthday also comes from the same sketch butterflies along with these. These are the sideways butterflies. You can get an idea of what's in the set. And then there's another great big one that's quite pretty, uh, which I will be using, but not today. So anyway, m make sure you're all stamped up. You guys don't need to see me stamp. These are red rubber stamps, by the way. I, I like a polymer photopolymer stamp because you can see where you're putting it but nothing nothing beats the way a red rubber stamp stamps there is just something so crisp and so amazing about how the rubber stands up just the ink and the paper anyway that's i'm old i'm an old style old style girl there i remember a time where there weren't any photopolymer stamps around <laughs> Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, it's been a long day already, and it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, let's keep going, folks. For the front, I did the same thing. Um, this is a coordinating piece from that set. And when you do this, we're going to cut some skinny bits. And I lined my skinny bits up. You don't have to line your skinny bits up. But I think it looks nice when you're using this kind of paper. I think it's sort of impressive when you do it. You're going to need side pieces. And so, let's set this up again. And then that actually was cut off the top there. So I wanted you to see what it looked like when it was in the whole thing. So I had a, an extra piece here extra bottom and extra top now once you get your pieces cut and it's really easy because the length is the same this this is the same the 10.2 um, or if you're working in three and three quarters no four inches sorry four inches four inches which is same as is this so that's going to be four inches that's going to fit on our card and you're going to also be 10.2 because you're going to leave a border around it. Right, so it fits in there like that. Now, I pretty much closed it up fairly tight. I didn't have much showing around the sides. Um, you do you. If you like more showing, do more showing. But these pieces, that actually, we can go ahead and do some gluing. And I did find for this particular bit, glue works the best. Um, I did a couple of samples because I always try to make, I make it up in metric and a lot of times, well, almost all the times, the numbers are different because metric cardstock is a different size and I don't like wasting cardstock. So you guys know I'm big on, big on getting the measurements. So just lined this up like that oh and you could I left the blank spaces here like Jackie did but you could leave these edges one color and then make the sides put your things on the sides or you can use the measurement and do all of all of the little panels that could be fun too oh and this the sizes on this I'm sorry this is um, this is slightly bigger for the front piece so this is eight 0.7 centimeters across and this is 10.2 down which is three and three eighths by four and one eighth or for the and for these little guys these outside guys these are 1.2 by 10.2 centimeters or three eighths by four and one eighth right got it Go ahead and continue to glue. Now, 
I'm not putting glue in the middle because I'm going to cut the middle out. You guys know I don't really like die cutting on camera because all you see is the die cutting machine or my hands, but mostly just the handle of the die cutting machine. I don't particularly, you know, don't particularly want to do that, but I will in this case because I'm going to show you what to do. All right, and then here's our next piece. You guys see I just kept these in order. I'll flip it over. Actually, the front of the card. Now let's do our pieces on the back. Come on, give me some glue. I love this glue. Did anybody, did you guys know that this, this Tombow liquid, you can actually make a sort of sticky note out of it? Uh, yeah, I picked that up wrong. If you put glue on something and let it dry to what I call semi-dry state. So if you touch it, you're not going to get glue on your fingers, but it's still sticky. And then you stick it onto something. Oh, I did it again. Come on. It'll act like a sticky note. You'll be able to pull it back off. It's just the problem I've had is it absolutely does work, but you have to be a good judge of when that's the correct dryness. Because if you allow it to dry completely on there, then it will seal completely. All right, and now here's our back piece. I am using, to avoid shadows, glue shadows, I am using my stamp and seal. that wrong oh I stamped it wrong look at that all right well I'm not gonna glue this one on here for now I'll go back and make another one ah so make sure you stamp it correctly because that's kind of weird looking it's supposed to go on here like this oh well hey mistakes are us that's easy enough to fix though except when you drop it on the floor butter side down hang on I gotta get that Anyway, you know where it goes, and since we are going to do it last, it's not going to matter. Now, this piece is going to go here. Now, I used my other, I used this piece to line up my stamping. You're not going to have this to do that with. So, I suggest you don't actually stick this down. Use that trick I was describing. Put a little bit of glue like on each of the corners. Um, let it mostly dry. Then stick it down temporarily after we do this front. Close the front and mark where you want it stamped. Um, this one you can... Oh, I got it good and erased. I made a, a little line across there when I lined up the stamp so I could tell where to put it. So anyway, but this one, I just used that circle, so it was it was not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, pop this one down for now. But just be aware, that's going to be easier for you if you don't glue this piece in at this well. See, I've been stamping for years, and so what I know, as a matter of fact, if you think about it too hard and you try too hard to line that stamp up and you stress over where and how you're stamping, you'll mess it up. 
that is inevitable. So I don't ever glue anything down permanently until it's already been stamped. And that way, I just grab my stamp and I go, thunk, and it's perfect. And then I can go and glue it down. But if I were to glue this down and then try to stamp it, I would mess it up every time. Every time I would mess it up. All right, we're not quite there yet. Almost. We need to cut this circle. Now, I used the stitched um, Stylish Shapes is the name of this. If I can pick it, I can pick it up. All right, this is the Stylish Shapes, which will give us a stitch circle. You can use the Deckle Circle. You can use, because there's the same one on the Deckle Circle. I wrote down the size of this. Hold on a second for, for my non-stampin' up people. Um... Come on, where are you? This is a seven and a half centimeter circle um, or two and three quarters, two and three quarter circles. A lot of times even you'll find things over here, um, you know, Europe and UK that are marked in inches. So it's usually two and three quarters. That's the biggest you can go. You can absolutely go smaller. I think Jackie's example was a little bit smaller and raised up. I wanted to see how big I could go, of course. Uh, but anyway, you can use decal circles. You can use Spotlight on Nature. There's a circle that's this size on there. Um, you can use a punch. Now, I want to tell you about the punch. I have my first one I did. Where's my punch? I used the punch. I used the 2 and 3 eighths punch. And I did it just like this, I glued it down. I put this in the punch, lined it up. Because you can see, look, that's gorgeous. If you've got a two and three eighths punch, that works really well. And my sample I did with a punch. Just, I'll tell you what. The problem with the punch is they don't, they punch well. But because you have a piece of thin paper on a, top of a piece of thick paper. You run the risk of getting, oh, it's not quite straight. You run the risk of it snagging on the corner. So if you do use a punch, don't glue this piece down, punch your cardstock. Then glue this piece down, flip it over, because you'll already have your hole back here. Then you can line it up and get, get a perfect alignment on there. So that's just a tip if you're going to use a punch, because I tried it, um, and the punch works really, really well, by the way. It's just that you have to punch each piece separately. All right, let's see. That was tip done. Let's put this on here. Now, this is very important when you're placing this, that you get it the same side on each side. This is before it's actually glued together. It's going to be a little bit delicate. So I highly suggest you tape it down. You do not want this to move. Oh, I'm using some of that really awesome post-it tape. But you could use anything. You could use a sticky note. You can use washi tape. All right, see, this is why I don't die cut on screen. Here we go. All you can see is the die cutter. Let's just put this on there and pop it in the machine just like that. And the other tip that I have for you, do it twice. Run it through two times. Oops, hang on. So off we go this way and oh, don't want to hit my cup of coffee. Hang on. Oh, I could have a drink of that. Yummy. All right, one and back for the second go. These dies are awesome. They're quite sharp. You probably don't have to do this, but you've got your die cutter out, and that's so easy, so, you know, do it. Just do it. Sound like a Nike commercial. What? Tape off. Tape off. 
really pretty circle used for something else. Pretty hole. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Let's get this down. I have this down on the floor beside me so I can trip over it. All right, and now you see how we cut the circle. Now, what I was talking about before, I closed the circle and I set my actual die on here. Die, not die. This thing, stamp. I set my stamp on here for my original and I said, okay, I want it to be right there and I drew a little light, light line to kind of guide me and then I erased it off. But like I said, I had this one, I just set them side by side and said, okay, that's about right. It's going to look, it won't look as good flat. So if you get it a little off center, it's not gonna matter because when you get it, when you have it pumped up with all its, its pretties, you can't really tell whether it's centered or not. See what I'm saying? So anyway, now decorating. Now the fun part. Let me get my stamp put away because they get stuck to things and then I lose them and then I get upset. I know nobody else has that problem. So now we get to do the fun part. For the front, I originally just cut one set of butterflies and I thought, oh, that's so pretty, but I didn't think it was enough. So I cut a shadow butterfly like that. And now when we put that on there, it pops it out a bit more. Now, something to keep in mind, I glued it down when it was completely flat. So I could make sure you don't want this edge to extend over this. Um, not only will it look funny because it's way too off center, but it, ha it can run the risk of not fitting in your card correctly. Right. And now the, the difficult thing of gluing this, and um, there's, there's lots of cursing involved. <laughs> I thought to cut it out using the, um, the backing paper, the double-sided glue that's actually paper, which I love when you have really delicate die cuts. That's fabulous to use. But since they're not they're sticking out it was difficult so basically I have an, an ancient old makeup sponge which I use all the time by the way so this is um, uh, look at the back of my die cuts has thingies little chippings okay and I know that it's this side so I'm only putting glue I can just pick that back up on this edge here. And we're going to turn it over and stick it down. And like I said, you, you're going to make a shadow out of this. So move it around, which is the other good thing about glue, until you just have a small edge like that. And that gives you a nice sort of a shadow effect and now put a little glue on this and just kind of brush it across because you know you're going to have some of it sticking out all right I tried it with dimensionals. See, I keep my glue in a, a leftover cup. I think sweet and sour sauce came in that. But it works to keep the sponge soft. I don't have too many of those old sponges left over. And now we are going to stick this on here. Like... So remember, I don't want too much sticking over here. <laughs> like that. Now we are going to let that sit a moment because it's a little sticky and I will go back over it with my eraser, my glue eraser, when it's done. 
but I tried using cutting up um, uh, dimensionals because I always be so pretty popped up. <laughs> yeah, I drove myself nuts. Don't I don't recommend it. Just stick them down. They look pretty, and because they extend over the edge, you still have that sort of flighty looking thing. Now, for these, I have another tip to you to, for you. Use your um, scorer. I don't know if this would work if you tried to do it with a score buddy, but with this, it holds the wings down. Line up that body just in the center, like that. Hold it down. Hopefully you won't have glue on your fingers like I do. Have a peek. Take this and lightly go over it like that. Now, otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to fold the vellum. And after you've done that, that will keep the vellum from cracking and will help it fold. It doesn't have to be super even fold. In fact, you don't really want it super duper even. But it's enough to keep that vellum from cracking when you fold it. And you can use a bone folder, but you can use a ruler and the edge of your bone folder like that to do it. I just found it easier like this. Okay, just put his little body there. I can move them around with my tweezers. No. Eh, or not. We may have to just... Of course, you know, off camera, I did it no problem, right? Trying to do it on camera, I am defeated. Perfect. And just a little back and forth. You don't have to go real crazy. But putting that in there really does make folding it much easier. The first one I did, I cracked the vellum. Um, because you don't really want it. It doesn't have to be folded hard and in ha and half. And you don't want to fold it so hard you're making um, white lines in it. If that makes sense. And this was the other reason I wanted the vellum, because you could see the butterflies back in front. Now to glue these down. <laughs> the first sample I did, I used glue. Uh, if you have mini glue dots, do yourself a favor, mini glue dots, or stamp and seal because the glue slides around and just like the water-based ink, it takes a long time to dry. So another hot tip, only use glue if you've nothing else. If you've got something like, like this, um, like seal or glue dots, highly, highly recommend it. Now you're gonna need two. Let's see, what do we, we had him on the bottom, don't we? Yeah. Oh, by the way, you notice we haven't closed it yet. Put your glue dots on it. They won't be seen. Normally you can see them through vellum, but in this case, with the sketched butterflies, you really can't see them. You do want two. You want one per wing. And then you set them up here. And you say, oh, where would you look pretty and still be seen? And we're going to go with about right there. And for this guy, uh, yeah, so we'll put our things on here. Okay, sorry, mumbling to myself. I'm sure nobody else does that. I can't imagine any crafter sitting there talking to themselves. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? But I always say, I talk to myself because at least I know it's good company. Yeah. All right. 
Now let's stick you on here. How about here? Stick you down, give you a little mash, and then it will come up. And now we have dimensional butterflies. Very pretty, which was the reason I used vellum. But it does still look pretty if you use um, regular paper. In fact, what you can do is, and I did try it, you can stamp on one side and then die cut it and then turn it over and stamp the other side. And you do, you die cut it first before you stamp the second image, obviously, so you can get it lined up. But you can do it and it looks pretty. So that's just a tip if you have no vellum. And now, for the last little bit, again, you can use glue. If you are willing to sit there and wait for it to dry. Um, the first one I did, oh, I don't have it anywhere near. I should get that thing out. The first sample I did, I used glue and ugh, it kept popping up because this is really stiff. So I decided, nah, I'm not going to drive myself nuts. I'm just going to use tear and tape. Or you can use seal as well. So for the tear and tape on this inside bit, go close to the inside line here. Oh, and by the way, all you people who can tear tear and tape evenly, I, my hat's off to you. I don't know if it's because of my fingernails or what, but I make such a mess with this stuff. All right. And now on this one, I wanted to put two down. One close to the inside and one close to the outside because there is quite a bit of stress on this. So, since my width is slightly off. Come on. There we go. And here is this. Like that Ouch. yes it gets really quiet when I'm concentrating sorry about that okay and let's do the inside first Now, yeah, that's pretty good. Didn't have any. Um, one of my samples had some overhang, and I just trimmed it. All right, folks. That's what she looks like, ready to go in the envelope. And surprisingly enough, it's not super heavy. There's, there's not a lot of heavy stuff on here. It's just, it's folded, a lot of folds. And to stand up and put on your... Now, what I did was I refolded it like this. To make sure everything was smashed down. You could mail it like this. Oh, I didn't get it quite straight. Look at that. Doesn't matter. As soon as you let go, it pops up. And there is your pop-up card. Now, I um, realize you can't really see that. But that looks really pretty sitting on a mantle. Or Oh, no, I squished my butterfly. That's okay. It will, it will come back. But there you have sketched butterflies. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I enjoyed making it. Once again, thank you to Jackie Bullhouse um, for this incredible idea and super simple execution. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
if you are watching me on Facebook, I always appreciate a heart. I will be sure and link Jackie's video to this. If you are watching on um, YouTube, a thumbs up. And for more interesting, fun stuff, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button. Have a lovely weekend, folks, and um, take care.